The Mario series has such a rich history in the RPG genre. As after the big success of Super Mario RPG, we were able to get not only one, but two Mario RPG series released over the years. If you're not playing stuff like the Paper Mario games on home consoles, you're probably going to be familiar with the portable scene with the Mario and Luigi games. Where even though they have similar traits like using jumps and hammers for attacks and such, they all have their unique directions to make them feel very different. With one of these having Mario go on these grand epic journeys, finding new people along the way, while the other one is Mario and Luigi going on these wacky adventures and see what happens in the next shenanigans. However, with the Paper Mario side of things, it's a bit more of a different story compared to the Mario and Luigi games. As after the Thousand Year Door, the series kind of had a weird identity crisis with each of the gameplays constantly changing. Which is something that the Mario and Luigi series didn't really have any trappings of, as the gameplay mostly stayed consistent over the years. Even when we jumped all the way to Nintendo 3DS with Dream Team, it's basically the same Mario and Luigi games we were getting from the DS days. And the reason why I'm bringing this all up, because two years after Dream Team release, we would not only see another Mario and Luigi game, but also it'll be a crossover with the Paper Mario series. Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. Now I remember the exact same moment I was when I saw this get announced. I was watching Nintendo's E3 showcase on my TV via the PlayStation 3 YouTube thing. Um, yeah, I always thought that the conference was pretty solid for the most part, with the one thing that was actually carrying it for me was probably the Muppet skit, because I don't know why I always find this very funny. But yeah, I saw the trailer and honestly got very excited for the announcement, because I really love Dream Team, it was, it was one of my most played games on 3DS. But the only thing that was grilling for me when I was younger is the fact that this game released in different countries earlier than the US, so we had to wait until January to get the game. But yeah, as of early 2016, I finally got the game, and I honestly had a really good time with it, but I didn't really like it as much as compared to other Mario & Luigi games. Because compared to something like Dream Team or Bowser's Inside Story, I've replayed those games a lot, but for Paper Jam, I haven't really picked this game up in like 5 years. In between that time, I've noticed a massive shift in terms of fan reception of this game. As now as you bring it up, 9 times out of 10, people will actually despise this game as people feel like this was a massive disappointment and didn't live up in terms of a crossover. And in terms of a Mario & Luigi game, the best way I can describe it is that it's literally Mario & Luigi on autopilot. And what also didn't help is that this was the final Mario & Luigi game from Alpha Dream, before they shut down a couple years later and leave the series under a nearly decade-long hiatus. And so for their swan song being a very anticlimactic, very safe Mario RPG game, yeah, I can see why people are very upset at this game. And after doing a lot of research, I think I've figured out the reasoning why this game ended up so tepid. And it might actually surprise you for those who don't know. But with everything out of the way, let's get started. So the story begins in the ever so iconic Peach's Castle, where Luigi and Toad were asked to go up to the attic area to inspect a small little draft that's causing a breeze within the castle. However, it's revealed to be a pest control as a scaredy rat arrives to startle Luigi, which accidentally causes him to knock a book off a shelf. However, this is not an ordinary book, as once it begins to open, a spark of light then appears out of it, which causes a herd of paper people to explode out of the book and spread across the Mushroom Kingdom with one of them landing directly inside the basement with Luigi, which so happens to be Paper Peach. With everyone shocked that there are now two Princess Peaches, although the Mario Brothers seem to be very fine with it. But yeah, so it turns out that the book Luigi knocked over hold a parallel world of the Mushroom Kingdom, where everyone is made out of paper. And so because of this, there are now two Bowsers loose into the world, and I love the fact that their first instinct is literally being the shit out of each other. So yeah, Mario and Luigi is going to need all the help they get, and eventually they do so when they are able to meet with Paper Mario. Which is a good thing too, because immediately after the Bowsers set out their differences, they do the first thing they both love in life, which is capturing Peach. And that is basically the plot for Paper Jam for the first half, as the main plotline is just trying to go to Bowser's castle to save Peach, that's basically it. And along the way, crazy shenanigans happen, although it's been severely toned down from past games. The only actual interesting thing I could think of is that there's a section where the Mario Brothers has been thrown to jail. There was a section where they climb a mountain? Yeah, I really got nothing. It really makes you wonder what happened with this game development-wise. And after doing a lot of research about this game, I found a very fascinating history about this game's development. 
So the original idea for Paper Jam is them wanting Mario and Luigi to have a third companion with them. With their pig so happy to be Paper Mario, which led to them having this fascinating story where the Mario Brothers get to explore the Mushroom Kingdom, but also go inside the Paper World and meet a lot of original characters. But the problem was is that they were way too ambitious with the story, and they couldn't figure out a way to tell a story with the paper aspect in a meaningful way. And so they decided to rework the game from scratch to make a much more simpler story, with the main theming is how the Mario and Luigi characters and the Paper Mario characters contrast from one another. And I'll be honest, I feel like a Mario and Luigi game could get away with very generic Mario themes for the sake of a crossover. Because with something like this, the main appeal is seeing other series interact with traditional Mario elements. Think of it like the Mario and Rabbids game, where in the first game you're pretty much going through traditional Mario settings, but throughout the game you're seeing the Rabbids' chaotic nature causing an effect on the world. And Paper Jam does make an attempt with this because Bowser is sending stuff from the Paper Mario world into the real world, and this would sound cool for any other series crossing over, but the problem is is that if you cross over Mario with Mario, you get a Mario story where there's just two Marios and two Bowsers and two Peaches. This doesn't work if you're focusing specifically on the characters that these two have in common. I'll be completely honest, I feel like they were better off restarting this game from scratch and just scrap the whole Paper Mario crossover. Like, if you really can't figure out a way to tell a story with Paper Mario, then I feel like it's best to try something else, like, why not have Peach join the brothers for a small venture? I mean, she already has a special ability where she can float in the air for a few seconds. I feel like they could have done very something interesting with her, or maybe even another character like Yoshi or something, I don't know. Even stuff like the simple writing in this game is also not as good as the other Mario and Luigi games. There are still plenty of moments in this game where it's still funny, don't get me wrong, but I feel like this game could have used a lot more slapstick comedy like the original games, as most of the jokes in this game can pretty much sums up as them making fun of traditional Mario tropes. We even got a year of Luigi mentioned by Starlo. Oh yeah, I think I should really talk about Starlo right now, um... Yeah, I mentioned my Bowser's Inside Story and Dream Team video that I don't really get the hate for Starlo per se. Like, I personally find her as like a decent companion for the Mario Brothers to hang out with. But I always get comments saying that Paper Jam is when Starlo is at its worst, as she constantly slanders Luigi and such, and um... Yeah, I'm sorry to say, but I still think the hate for Solo has been a bit overblown over the years. Like, I did know that she makes a lot more snarky remarks toward Luigi, but the actual comments she makes towards Luigi makes her more so just a bit wisecracking. With the insults she does do have the same impact of... Sonic calling Knuckles a knucklehead. And even then, she doesn't really bust Luigi's chops that much in this game at all. I only recall only four times she actually does so. And even when she does it, I never really got the impression that Starlo hated Luigi. It's not like she's literally calling Luigi offensive slurs or anything. And I'll be honest, I'm honestly kind of fine with Starlo this way. Because I feel like she would have been just a really bland companion if she was just like this overly nice companion for the Mario Brothers to hang out with. And plus, Starlo's not even the only character that's making fun of Luigi in this game. Which also brings up another criticism I've noticed about Paper Jam, which is that people aren't really very happy of Luigi being the butt of the joke for a lot of characters in this game. But personally, I didn't really mind it to say, I didn't really think about it too much. 80% of the jokes in Superstar Saga and Partners in Time was literally at Luigi's expense. So stuff like this is literally just another Tuesday with these games. So yeah, I didn't really mind these jokes per se, I didn't laugh at it, but I didn't really roll my eyes either. They were just... there. But I will say, there are still a few moments in this game where it did give me a good chuckle, um... I did get a good chuckle when Mario and Luigi starts going go googly eye when they saw two Princess Peaches. I laughed when the Mario Brothers and Starlo were just messing around with this paper Goomba. And surprisingly, the most memorable moments in this game is when Luigi gets to interact with Paper Mario. As literally Luigi's first instincts when he sees him is literally hugging him. And later on in the game, when Luigi was devastated after realizing he lost the book, I like how Paper Mario folds himself into a small little tissue to have him wipe his tears away. So yeah, even though that there isn't a lot of funny moments in this game, I still think when the moments do shine, they really do shine. Alrighty, so jumping all the way to gameplay, um... Yeah, it's basically the same from the previous games. You basically run around, do action commands and such. It's what you expect from a Mario & Luigi game, but this time around, Paper Mario is included with the brothers. And just like Mario & Luigi, he is designated to a certain button. 
And not just that, but there's also a button in this game now where everyone can jump at the same time and do this slight little hover move. And not just that, but also if you hold it down a bit, the trio will actually run around the areas this time as well. Which makes this game feel go a lot more faster than previous Mario & Luigi games. Which is a good thing too, because you really don't do a lot around the overworld in this game. You do still unlock the ever so iconic bro moves, although this time it's called the trio moves. With one of them giving you a way more powerful hammer slam. The second one is essentially a grapple move as you can grab onto stuff from long distance. And the drill move is unironically probably the best time they actually use the drill move in a Mario & Luigi game. As you can climb on walls with this ability and do a small little charge that does lead to very interesting platformings. But in terms of actual exploration, this game is a bit more on the barren side. As all you're pretty much just trying to do with these areas is trying to get to your next destination. Which I felt it the most with stuff like the grasslands and especially the desert. But I feel like this game does get better over time, especially when we head to the forest area. Because with this area, your main objective is trying to feed this hungry wiggler fruit. That way you can clear the path that was caused by Paper Kamek. Which, I'll be honest, this kind of gave me war flashbacks of Sticker Star. The last time Kamek went to a forest with a wiggler, he literally left him as a severed head. Although I've got to say, the fake wiggler death scene actually did get me. Because the way the Paragroupus just flies all the way down to pick Wiggler up and send him up in the sky, <laughs> I don't know why, that actually got me. But yeah, in terms of actual exploration, this game is a bit more on the minimum side. That is because in Paper Jam, they have a larger focus on this small little mission structure. As Paper Jam is also the grand debut of Tourette in a Mario & Luigi game, who helps out the brothers along the way by giving them special tools to defeat Bowser with. But in order to make these tools, she's going to need a lot of helping hands, so throughout the game, you'll be gathering up various paper toads across the Mushroom Kingdom, who are completely uneasy about the new world they are in. So in order to find them, you need to go into the small little building with a bunch of Lakitus, where they'll give you a bunch of missions to do. Which are basically these small little mini-games, where you have to either chase them down and such by tackling them, Honestly, when I first went into this game, I was actually dreading these parts because I thought they were going to be overly long and such. But no, a lot of these only last about like 3 or 4 minutes long. And I feel very incentive of doing a lot of these because you get a lot of great rewards if you actually do them all. Not all of them are great, I feel like the later ones do kind of drag a bit, especially with the snowy mountain area. The one thing I'm actually very grateful though is that you can actually do them all at once, so at the near end of the game when I was trying to do the rest of them, all it was was just one simple trip at Lakitu's place, and I was able to get them all in one swoop. Which is honestly very nice, because I was worried that you have to go through every single individual Lakitu house just to get them all. Because my lord, if they actually do that, I would probably be seeing a different tune. Especially later on in this game, where you need to find these toads. But besides those, there's also a few other missions that are going to be mandatory throughout the game as well. Like the elusive Naba chasing sections. So in previous games, you'll have yourselves with these special bro attacks. And how you unlock them depends on which game you are in, with Superstar Saga you pretty much learn them on the fly. But in Bowser's Inside Story and Dream Team, how you unlock these things is by collecting all the attack pieces. But jumping all the way to Paper Jam, you actually get the, your first ever bro attacks immediately when you start the game. That is because the rest of the bro attacks has been completely stolen by Nabbit. And you unlock even more of these abilities once you're able to capture them by taking back all your stuff. Which honestly I really like, because I always adore Nabbit as a character, um, I like how much of a anti-hero he is somewhat, like, you have no idea what side he's on. Like, he didn't steal the attack pieces because he was working with Bowser or anything, he's just a thief. Because at the near end of the game, when you're trying to get your final stuff, you actually get to fight Nabbit, and then suddenly he fights with you, and then it go back and forth, like, what side is this guy on? Let's go! But alright, so jumping all the way to the battle system. So just like the overall in this game, there's really not that much to talk about with the battle system in this game, because if you really played one of the Mario & Luigi games, you'd probably be familiar with this game. With the only big difference is that you now have three characters to control on the field, instead of just two. With Paper Mario probably being one of the most unique playable characters in the series. As he basically functions similarly to the brothers, but this time around when he jumps, he can do this small little hover move, which does lead to unique counters against enemies, plus, it'll give you a lot more legroom when you're controlling three characters at once. And also, if you think three characters are a bit too much, they add out a small little assist mode that shows you who's about to get attacked, which is very useful because surprisingly at the near end of the game, attacks in this game could be a bit overwhelming, so I actually recommend using this if you're having trouble. But as for other things Paper Mario can do, 
Similar to something like Geno in Super Mario RPG. Super Mario RPG. He's essentially the glass cannon of the RPG characters. Where he has very effective attacks, but he's very weak defense-wise. So you'll be using this special copy block that's essentially a shield for Paper Mario. And not just that, but also his attacks and hammers will be a lot more powerful than doing it singly. With the only drawback is that you need to waste one turn to max out Mario's copy ability. So it's basically a good balance if you want to be safe and sorry to copy Mario, or if you want to risk it and do a special attack. And as for the bro moves, while well, all of them gets carried over from Dream Team, with some of them being a bit adjusted like the Drop Chopter, which originally used mostly trolls but jumping to Paper Jam, you're now using just a simple analog stick. And with these, you're mostly going to be controlling them as Mario and Luigi, but with Paper Mario, this is when the trio attacks come into play, which are way more over the top compared to the bro attacks, as Paper Mario wields in a giant hammer and smashes them all into small little paper pieces, and you basically have to attack them, which does so much damage. And just like the Luigi-nary attacks from Dream Team, these are really fun to master, I especially love the trio whirlwind and the shuriken moves, as these feel so satisfying when you pull it off. And what is also new to this game are the brand new PAL cards, which are basically replacements of badges from previous games. But they pretty much work kind of similar, where the brothers need to attack the enemies to fill up this gauge, with the more points they get, the more they can activate a battle card. Which can do various things like heal them, do damage against enemies and such, or you can put a little curse on the enemies to get special rewards like an EXP boost or something. Honestly, I think this might be a hot take, but I actually kind of prefer the battle cards over the original badge system, as there are so many cards to get pretty much strategize around. And this is not even talking about the special amiibo ability, which allows you to unlock even rarer cards with special renders of each character. So yeah, even though the actual themings of this game has been simplified from past games, at the very least they still evolved the battle system in very interesting ways. With the only actual gripes I can think of with this system, is that since we're having an overly simple Mario story for Paper Jam, that means the enemies in this game are a bit on the simple side, but I will give credit when credit's due is that functionally wise, I do feel like the paper enemies in this game does spice up the battle system a lot in this game, because they aren't really carbon copies of their real world counterpart, as a lot of times they'll pretty much fold around their bodies and such, which does lead to very interesting attacks. And it's really cool seeing characters like King Boo and King Baba make their big debut in a Mario RPG. But as for the other thing I need to talk about is how you level up in this game. So every time you level up in the previous Mario Luigi games, you'll have this special little bonus roulette. And with this, you can add a few little more points to your stats, like having more health, grow points, or power. But jumping all the way to Paper Jam, that has been completely omitted, which honestly confused me more than anything. But at the very least, they do make it up a bit by giving you way more beans than usual. And also, they give you way more useful permanent upgrades in the ranking system. Like Paper Mario being able to have 10 copies at once instead of just 6, or having one of the brothers' bro point requirements being cut in half. Which honestly I really do like, because it gives this game a lot more of a different strategy than previous Mario Luigi games, so I will give credit to that. So of course, since Bowser's Inside Story did it and Dream Team did it, obviously Paper Jam would follow suit with a special type of battle system. This time being the Paper Craft Battle, and honestly these aren't really that bad. For every single one of these things, you operate with a very unique one with their own special traits. Like Mario being the most basic ones, but Papercraft Luigi has a special hammer, and Papercraft Peach has a special parasol that can hover in the air for a bit. And lastly, there is Papercraft Yoshi, and obviously since it's Yoshi, this is usually the best one as he's able to use his tongue to latch onto enemies or poles. Honestly, at first I wasn't really digging at this, but the more stages within the Papercraft system, the more better it gets in my opinion. Okay, so jumping all the way to the half point in this game's story, after going through a wild goose chase of going into Bowser's castle, the trio were able to rescue the two princesses, and along the way they were able to defeat both Bowser Juniors. But unfortunately for the trio, this was a severe mistake, because now there are two angry fathers up in their tail for having their sons getting hurt. And I'll be honest, this is probably unironically one of the best scenes in this game for me, because I like how the Bowsers drop the whole evil act and just care about their son's well-being. I don't know, I just like the fact that despite Bowser being the biggest bad guy in the Mario series, he's still unironically a really good father. So yeah, with the two making their escape with the two princesses, Bowser unleashes their greatest plan, 
which has converted the entirety of the castle into a giant hovercraft called Neo Bowser's Castle. It's literally the same name from Dream Team. So yeah, Bowser is taking advantage of cardboard technology, and his first move is immediately blowing up Peach's castle. So now the Mario Brothers need to figure out a way to climb all the way back up to Bowser's castle again. Which basically means another wild goose chase around different areas you've been through before, just so you can head to the top of Mount Burr. And yeah, that's about it. You basically go through different toad missions and do some bosses and such. There aren't really that much of an objective of exploring the area similar to Superstar Saga or Dream Team. There are certain quests you should do, like the elusive Nabbit missions I mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's basically it. You just climb a bit higher through the same mountain you've been through before, and you're immediately at the end point of this game. Which really emphasized the fact on just how much this game just goes through autopilot, like, you're really just going through the motions in Paper Jam. And as for the presentation of this game, it is honestly very solid for the most part. Like, the art style is mostly the same from Dream Team, with the only big difference I've noticed is that the camera angle in Paper Jam has been lowered a bit, so you get to see more of Mario and Luigi's face. Which does make the characters a lot more expressive compared to Dream Team because of it. And as for the paper characters in this game, they are surprisingly really well animated. Especially with Paper Mario, like, one of the most entertaining parts of this game in my opinion, is just seeing Paper Mario just move around and use his paper abilities in very funny ways. And as for stuff like the environments, well, they look pretty good for the most part appealing wise, but aesthetically and such, yeah, it does lean too much on the traditional Mario style you would be familiar with with other games. With the most appealing part of this game is easily Mount Burr, but I think that's just part of my brain who just really loves snowy themes, so. But on a much more positive note, I do feel like the music in this game is also really good. I'm not even kidding when I say it, is that the simple grass theme in this game got stuck in my head countless times over the years. It is such a catchy song, I recommend hearing it. Even the battle music in this game is also very good, I like how at the very beginning of this game, it's basically a remix of Superstar Saga's battle, which is such a really cool callback. And as for stuff like the boss thing music and such, they really fit the tone very well, especially when we head to the end point of this game. As after facing off Nabbit, the two Kameks, for the very last time, we then face off in one big final paper craft battle, and last but not least, we then face off with every single Koopaling, which I've gotta say is probably the most brutal part in this game because it's essentially an endurance test as each of the Koopaling boss fights have their unique gimmicks, so I highly recommend stocking up on items for this one. But when it's all said and done, it's time for the final battle, as we have two Marios, two Bowsers, and one Green Stash. And man, this final battle is surprisingly really good. So for the first phase, you're basically duking out with two Bowsers, as you try to keep on your toes as they try to attack you with fire breaths. But when phase two rolls out is when this boss gets really good. For one, that is unironically a really cool armor Bowser's wearing. They shouldn't have gone this hard on making cardboard look cool, but they did. And second, this is a really good challenging boss, as you can't just simply just plow all your strongest attacks instantly, because you need to carve through the armor first to do so. Because if you just do your trio attacks right now, Bowser will try to intervene with his own special trio moves. Meaning that, Bowser has even more opportunities to try and attack the players. And this is another reason why I recommend going deeper into the battle cards, because if you do enough working or save enough coins, you can get a special card that levels down Bowser's stats. Which is a really cool reward if you really look deeper inside of the game's mechanics. But when everything is said and done and you do that ever elusive final blow or fumble the attacks and still kill him, the two Bowsers finally goes down with the real one falling right out of his castle and fall really, really far into the Mushroom Kingdom with the trio sealing away Paper Bowser in the world that you came from. The entirety of the Mushroom Kingdom has been saved, with everyone having a celebration with one big parade. And along the way, they send all the paper creatures back for where they belong. And ending things off with Peach and Mario saying goodbye to their paper counterparts. As suddenly Bowser then returns to attack Peach's castle once more, meaning that everything has gone back to normal. Concluding Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. <sighs> okay, so um... Yeah, that was definitely a game. As for my final verdict of Paper Jam, I personally thought this game was just okay. Like, I don't think this game is aggressively terrible as some people say it is. It's just a very harmless Mario RPG game. But this is definitely the weakest Mario and Luigi game in the series. As nothing really interesting happens in this game, as I mentioned earlier, 
this game just really plays on autopilot. Like, compared to Dream Team, despite the constant sh** this game gets because of its tutorials, at the very least, that game gives you way more stuff to do in that game. Way bigger areas to explore with their unique set pieces. Way more interesting characters, which is effective blend between the new and old. Way more content in this game, as there's so many things you can do within this game. And overall, just felt like a remnant of a Mario game we used to get during the 2000s. And compare all this to Paper Jam, where yes, I do have to agree that the pacing in this game is way better than Dream Team, but despite that, they really don't give you that much to do within this game. So it doesn't really matter how well the pacing is compared to Dream Team, because it's still very barren in comparison. As this is basically a game that suffered from severe development issues of trying to fit in a concept that didn't really work out so well, and so to compensate, they try to make it overly safe so they can have enough time to get this game released during the Christmas seasons. But not to say that everything in this game is bad, because there are a few things I really do like about this game. Like, I do feel like the battle system in this game is the most polished in the series. Pit Mario, even though that he's basically here in name only, I do feel like functionally he is a really good addition to this game. And I really love the battle card mechanics, as it's a nice evolution of the original badge system in past games. So I do understand why some people would still like this game, because at the end of the day, it's still a Mario and Luigi game, and Mario and Luigi games are very fun. But at the same time, I do understand why a lot of people dislike this game, because this game just feels very barren compared to other Mario & Luigi games. But I feel like the most egregious part of this game is not necessarily the game's fault per se, but it's the fact that this was the final game from Alpha Dream. As after releasing the two remakes and the studio is shutting down, we wouldn't see another Mario & Luigi game for nearly 9 years. But luckily, by the time I'm making this video, we're only two weeks away of finally ending this nine-year-long hiatus. And I'm also glad to celebrate this by playing through every single Mario & Luigi game in the series so far. Even with Paper Jam, despite me being overly critical with this game, I still had a somewhat good time replaying this game for the first time in years. And if you're very curious on Mario & Luigi Paper Jam, then I also recommend trying it out. It's still a pretty solid game, even if it's a lot barren compared to other Mario & Luigi games. I also highly recommend trying out the soundtrack in this game, as it's also very good. You even get a nifty cameo with Paper Luigi in the jukebox menu in this game. But as for my next video, well, since it's the Halloween season of course, I feel like it's very appropriate to celebrate with a special Halloween video. So the next time we'll be here, we'll be talking about Luigi's Mansion ROM hacks. But that'll do for today, so thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye bye